Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Now, a very common problem I see with a lot of people within the community is basically that they don't have an AD champion for their pool. Maybe they're traditionally a mage player, they don't really feel comfortable playing champions like Aurelia, Zed, and Talon, and they're just in a bit of a rut and they don't know who to add into their pool. So I thought I'd basically solve that problem, and we're going to do it through the eyes of Pantheon. Now, I think Pantheon is a very fun champion. He's super easy to pick up, very simple kit, very simple identity. And the great thing about Pantheon is that he's good in any single elo. He's good in silver, gold, platinum, diamond, master tier plus games. He's just a very, very versatile, flexible, really fun champion to play. Now, instead of doing my traditional guide video where I predominantly get my content from Master Plus games, I thought it would be, I thought it would be a lot more useful for you guys to see Pantheon played in a lower elo. Now, these games are played at around high platinum, low diamond. And the reason for this is because I get a lot of people saying something like this. Curtis, I play Assassins, I get ahead, and you know, in low elo, the games just get extended and I don't know what to do. So I'm also going to try and weave this all in together and solve multiple problems at once. And the way I'm going to do this video is I'm going to go over the first nine minutes of the first VOD to basically highlight this problem. Because it literally happens to me today, I become, bas I get like six and I get a few kills in the early game. And because I don't call for Rift Heralds, we end up actually losing the game. Now in the second VOD, I'm going to show you how I do it properly. I call for objectives, we push the pace of the game, and we end up snowballing and winning the game. So hopefully after this video, you're not, not only going to know how to play Pantheon, or you know have the start the steps or begin the steps to pick up Pantheon, but you're going to be able to feel a lot more confident pushing leads while playing any early game champion. Now, just for runes, guys, um, pretty standard, stock standard stuff for Pantheon. You basically want to be going Conqueror, uh, Triumph. You can go Legend Alacrity or Legend Tenacity if they have a lot of CC. And you finish that off with um, either Cutdown if they have a lot of HP. I personally like Last Stand, but Coup de Grave, you're in a really, really easy matchup. And then secondary, um, go Time Warp, Tonic, and Biscuits. That's for my personal favorite. Let's dive straight into the first VOD here, guys. This first one, I'm actually versing a Lux. Now, the first thing I highly recommend doing every single game when playing Pantheon is just assessing this summoner of your enemy. The reason this is important is because since you take Ignite, if these guys take a, you know, a defensive summoner like Cleanse, Barrier, Heal, or Exhaust, it's going to significantly lower your kill threat on this person. So it's good to just be conscious of it or have it on, in the back burner because otherwise if you don't consider it, you might get yourself into a bit of a sticky situation. Now, I don't know how much you guys know about Pantheon, but I quickly want to explain a few things before we get into the nitty gritty. Now, the biggest thing you need to pay attention to with Pantheon is his passive. His passive is his bread and butter. It's very important to always be conscious about the amount of stacks you have. Once you're at five stacks here, um, your next ability is going to be empowered. And you actually start off with um, five stacks, so your first ability is going to be empowered. Now, Empowered Q is your, your bread and butter burst ability. Basically, it's just like Pike Q. If you um, stab it instead of like holding it down, it does a, a, a metric ton of burst, so it's very important to understand. If you empower your W, now this is very important to understand. If you empower your W, it actually, it actually what it, it does, it, does um, it stuns them, and then it does three quick uh, basic attacks. Now, the basic attacks actually stack Conqueror, so it helps you stack up Conqueror, and... Um, it contributes three stacks towards your um, passive again on the next rotation of your passive, which is very, very important to know. Because when you do, say you want to do more of an extended skirmish, not just one-shotting someone, um, Empower W is really, really nice because, again, you're utilizing your Conqueror stacks. It's actually building your Conqueror stacks, and it's going to help you get an empowered another empowered ability while you're in the fight. So it's very important to know that. Empowered E just it basically increases the duration. Um, and another important thing to note is that your R, when you use your R, it um, automatically makes your passive stacks go to full. So whatever ability you're going to have after your ultimate, it's going to be empowered, which is very, very, very helpful to, understand, uh, to know as well. Now, level one as Pantheon, basically what you want to be looking to do is find a way to get this Q onto the enemy. Um, sometimes you're just going to get completely outranged and that's fine. Um, but a, a quick little tip, what you can actually do is what I do this game. Um, I'm positioning outside the wave. I'm keeping my attention focused on which... Um, 
what, which minion this uh, Lux is going to go for and then make Lux make a choice, bang, between going for the minion or taking a cue to the face or she just misses it. So look at this, I know she's going to look to auto attack this minion here and I'm able to just to walk up and get a nice little cue to the face. And notice how much damage that does. Now, in terms of wave position in the early game, there's basically two things, basically only two options. One, you're going to be letting the enemy push you in level one and two. You want to be ideally holding it in this pocket around here. Um, and, and then around level three, you're going to be looking for ex long extended trades, just doubling on them, um, you know, Q with your empowered Q, blocking any follow-up damage with your E and then getting a really, really nice trade. And the beautiful thing about this one, this is also really good if you're versing, if you have an early ganking jungler, they can really capitalize on this. The other way of playing Pantheon in your wave level one is kind of keeping it in the middle slash slightly pushing. This is so you can, um, in between waves, actually get a nice little ward at around 2.30. For those of you who've watched my wave, uh, my, uh, my jungle tracking video, you'll understand why that's really important. And I actually do it within this video here. Um, so that's the benefit of actually kind of pushing or holding it in the middle level one. Um, and more importantly, if you do that, you're actually going to have more of a chance to get double scuttle for your jungler because you're, you're always going to get to river first. That's the only downside of kind of getting pushed in early is that um, you're not going to be able to get to those river skirmishes as easily. Now, um, yeah, in the early game here, one thing that you can actually do um, is you can actually look to last hit with your Q and try and poke them at the same time. That's what I do sometimes. I try and aim my Q through the minion into them as well. Um, but it's not a big deal if you don't because the damage really isn't that high. But notice how I'm always standing outside the minions at this point because I'm trying to actually get a bit of a shove going on here into this Lux so I can get a deep ward um, to spot out the enemy jungler's path. Knowing it's a, it's a Zac and I really want to know if he's doing a full clear what sort of path he's actually looking to do. So um, I'm really trying to get this shove in in the early game. Again, this is just one of the styles of playing Pantheon in the early game. It really does depend if you're dueling with someone, if you've got an aggressive jungler. Um, just really, really depends here. And again, if I was playing this very selfishly, this is not what I would want to do. Because again, you guys can see, quite obviously, there's no room for me to all in this guy. Like, he's so deep next to the tower. So at this point, I'm just playing for scuttles. And I'm just playing either to reset the wave, get it bouncing out to make him vulnerable. Or keep it shoved so I can get full access to both rivers. And we can get maybe even a double scuttle. Or an early skirmish is going to be really, really helpful. Now notice, if you're looking to hard push waves in like this, I've got my full passive stack. Then I'll look to queue all the minions. And it's really, really efficient at um, killing minions. It does a lot of damage. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, again, 2 minutes 30, I'm looking toward. And I really, because they're playing Zac. And Zac's a, a full clear jungler or a talisman jungler. Um, it's a lot better toward the buff and blue just to see where he's at. Now, now that I've spotted that blue guy's... Um, you now know, because of my jungle tracking video, it's 2.35. If he's not on that blue buff, he's maybe doing like a three camp bot side, doing more of a full clear, um, knowing that he started red here. And I know 100% that he's not going to be ganking me from top side, because if he's going to be top side, he's going to be always on that blue. And, and most likely right now, he's still on bot side, finishing up his three camp bot side. Because he's a talisman jungler, and they do raptors. So as long as I lean on top side here, I'm all good. Now notice I'm always trying to kind of, I'm either trying to um, keep this wave shoved in, I'm trying to keep this wave shoved in, generating a lot of pressure knowing that um, it's getting towards 315 because 315 is when the scuttle spawn. And this is the huge strength of Pantheon guys. The huge strength of Pantheon is that he's extremely hard to gank at level 3 because of his E, so I'm really not scared here at all. I can basically block all of their damage. But more importantly, if you keep pressure around, like, like I'm doing here, you keep pressure around three minutes, your jungler's going to be, can do so many things. He can invade, knowing I can back him up, which I do in actually the next VOD, or dive really early. You can secure every scuttle, you can look for early roams. There's just so many things you can do. And after that, you can just push the wave, bounce the wave, and then make the enemy vulnerable. Now look, the jungler comes in, I'm leaning to the top side because I know Zach. I've just pressed tab to check his CS, he's got 12, so I know he's done 3 camp bot side. I know he's 100% going to be going on to his, um, his top side jungle right now. So now we know where Zach is at the moment. Now I notice that Lux has actually got a few minions um, pushing towards me. And I see that, um, I know that Silas is going to be heading into the river very soon. And because we know where Zack is, I feel confident of actually setting up a gank on this Lux before we go for that top scuttle fight. So what I actually do here is instead of just spamming my abilities on the wave here, I actually let it come out a little bit and try to set up a gank. 
Now, one thing, guys, when playing Pantheon is that you always need to be conscious about what your intention is with the wave. If you autopilot with Pantheon and you basically just naturally play defensively or uh, autopilot and play too offensively, you're either going to die, you're going to get chunked, not gonna, the wave's never going to be a good position for you to all in, you're never going to be able to roam and not get good resets. It's very important that you're either thinking about setting up a gank, backing up your jungler, you're always looking to do something. Because remember, the early game is your domain. This is your time to do something. Now, um, I know that Lux hasn't watered yet. I'm pretty sure Lux actually hadn't watered. No, I think that he watered in that, that bush. I know he, yeah, so I know he's watering in that bush. Oh, I don't even know if he watered in that bush. I think he's faked it. I think this Lux honestly faked it, but we'll see. Anyway, I knew that we could really um, get this gank off. I knew that she was very overextended. I know we have a lot of chain CC, so I do flash W, and then Silas misses E, unfortunately. So, um, it is what it is here, and we actually fail the gank, but we blow, um... We blow both summoners onto this Lux. Now you can kind of see the the theory here. In theory, this gank would have worked if Silas hits the E, because then he can actually get the W as well, and then it's just complete. It's just so free. But um, here ends up giving double buffs to this Lux. We fail the gank. We know Zach's top side right now. It is what it is. But then this guy overextends, and what do I notice right now, guys? What do I see? I have 10 stacks of my Conqueror. The way is still in an awkward position. Lux doesn't have any summoners, and I'm actually sitting on full 5 stacks. So I know I'm very, very strong. So I know I want to utilize my, my 10 Conqueror stacks. It just disappears then, but it doesn't matter because I still have my, my, um, my fully stacked passive. Look at that. Bang, bang, bang. Auto attack. Um, Q. Now look, look what happens when I do my Empowered W. It gets three, it gets me so many stacks of my Conqueror super, super quickly. It allows me to um, get, you'll see, I actually get three stacks of my passive straight away. So there's a few things you can do. You can either instantly use your E, auto, then Q for the empowered Q, or you can just um, auto attack, auto attack Q, or you can just, um, you know, Q, E, whatever, whatever you really want to do as long as... Um, you're either finishing them off or trying to E auto and then um, time it for the empowered Q. But they already knew I could just kill him there. But I think what I should have done here in terms of efficiency, I should have actually E'd here, then auto attacked, then empowered Q'd. But I feel like it was a free kill anyway. But anyway, get that kill. Really, really nice. Um, so this is really big for me, guys. I'm one and zero as Pantheon. Now, this is a very common situation you're gonna be on Pantheon. You're gonna, you know, have these early skirmishes, whether it's around a scuttle or a gank or whatever. Um, and you're gonna be in this situation. Now, you'll notice what I do after this um is very, very important to understand. Now, actually, before I go on here, one thing I didn't mention at the beginning of the video, which is extremely important to note when playing Pantheon, or when w wanting to pick Pantheon, is that Pantheon in Champ Select, you always need to be ideally picking Pantheon with Elise, um, champion like Echo, um, Karthus, any AP jungler is ex extremely good, but specifically Elise. Elise Pantheon is so good because the chain CC is out of this world. The kill threat is unbelievable. But basically, Pantheon thrives with any AP jungler. If you have a very AD stacked team, it is very hard to end games as Pantheon. Um, so ideally, you really want to avoid picking Pantheon when you don't have a lot of AP on your team already. Just something to keep on keep in mind. So anyway, end up getting this wave in. But what do we know, guys? And then Zach ends up showing top a little bit there. End up getting a quick reset. Um, going for my uh, my Yomus. That's generally build path. Yomus is your first item. And what do we know here? We know that Zach is just reset. I'm timing mid flash now. Timing mid flash is extremely important when playing Pantheon. So I'm just timing the mid flash. But what do we know about Zach's location? If Silas is on top side here, and we know Zach's done a full clear, we know Zach is 100% going back onto his rubber banded camps around five minutes. So I literally ping danger on the enemy Krugs because I know that's most likely where he's going to be going. So, um, right now Lux has a bit of room to do something, so it just it is what it is. I sacrificed my tempo there, but I'm able to get a, um, a serrated Dirk, and I'm nearing nearing six. So I know Zach's hundred percent bot side. There's no real mystery here. Zach done a full clear. He's going to be going to his rubber banded camps. So I thought it'd be a really good opportunity for me to shove this first wave and get a bit of vision out first. Now this is a big thing I do all the time on Pantheon. Instead of now, um, you know. You know, even if this, like, 
a lot, what a lot of people actually do here is they, they, they slow push this wave and then they look to do something. Personally, my, my personal favorite thing to do is first hard shove this wave, try and bounce it or crash it in, and get yourself a bit of vision first. Because once you get vision down in the river, it's a lot easier for your, both your jungler to make plays, me to make roams, me to actually play a lot more aggressive in my lane. Because if I just slow push this out, I have no idea where Zach is in terms of he would be on Raptors right now. Um, I wouldn't really feel comfortable all inning Lux at this point. So a lot of the time I actually like to get vision out first so I can at least understand um, that I'm safe to play aggressively in my lane. So what I end up doing here, end up uh, placing a pink. And then I end up um, checking if they're on dragon. No, we see Zach on, on Krug still. So I use this as an opportunity to get a Warden Raptors. And for those of you who watched my warding, my jungle track video, I know right now Zach's going to be going, he's going to be finishing his Krugs and going to his Raptors most likely. Um, and then looking to either gank and then get his red as it spawns. So that's ideally what he wants to be doing right now. So I end up using the Scryer's Bloom here just to spot him out. Um, then I see Galio. We know he's still on Krugs there, so I ping on the red Krugs area. And my Silas is still not on the map, unfortunately, so I just got to play patient. Now, this is a huge thing, guys. When playing any... If you're playing something like Pantheon, you have to be aware of your jungler's location. If I were to just play crazy and all in on this Lux and do crazy things now, if it's a free kill, it's a free kill. That's completely fine. But I have to keep in mind that my Silas is extremely far behind on tempo over this... Zach. Zach's already on the map, having reset on the map, on his bot side, looking to gank soon. And my Silas actually hasn't even reset, I believe. So, um, I got to be very, very careful about when I choose to all in. So it's all about calculated aggression. Now, I know Zach's still bot side. Um, there he is, because he can't be anywhere else, right? Because his red hasn't spawned yet. Um, he's on his bot side here. So it's very, very good. We, we know where he is. And even if he didn't go there, um, I would have seen him on this ward, maybe pathing tops or getting his walls maybe before he goes back in to, to finish his red. I don't know. Um, but either way, I would have seen him with that ward, which is a really, really good ward. So I'm just waiting for my Silas to kind of come back on the map, finish his camps and actually do something. I don't know what this Silas has actually been doing, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Now what I'm actually doing here is just hovering out of vision in between waves to threaten my ultimate here. I'm actually doing two things at once here. So I'm simultaneously faking that I'm hovering bot to relieve pressure bot. I, I'm i doing three things, sorry. I remember I was doing three things. Three things. Number one, I'm leaning out of vision to threaten bot lane so and put myself in a position so that, you know, if they overextend, then I can capitalize. Two, I'm actually looking to counter gank bot because I we knew that Zach was potentially lane ganking bot, so I could counter gank bot. Then three, I was positioning myself on the bot side here because for those of you who actually paid attention in my <laughs> jungle tracking video, I know I've mentioned a lot, but it was a lot of information in it. If you path on the bottom side of the lane, a lot of the time it actually forces the enemy to feel safe, lean on the top side because there maybe the, uh, Lux is thinking, oh. Pantheon's going into bot side, which means that's where Silas must be because most mid laners lean to their jungler. So it actually sometimes can actually make them lean onto the other side. And because my Silas was hovering mid, um, you know, we could have done something, but, you know, she wasn't biting the bait. Um, it is what it is. So I end up, um, this gank doesn't work. So I end up pinging this guy back. Then I see them so overextended bot. This is where good side, lane, good side lane awareness comes into play. Bang, ultimate just behind them. And the way the Pantheon ult works, it just, you always arrive over here at the tip of the ultimate. Bang, with my full stacks here. Notice I've got my full passive stacks. And unfortunately, I get CC'd. So my panic response is, okay, I need to just soak as much damage as possible, then use my empowered E. Now, in these fights, ideally, what you want to be doing is... You want to be starting these fights with your W because it's going to be an extended fight. So by starting a fight with your Empowered W, you're going to be getting your uh, Conqueror stacks a lot easier. Because if I just use my Empowered Q right now, then it's going to take me a while to actually get my second Empowered ability. So you really want to start these abilities with your Empowered W. Unfortunately, I get taunted here just before I'm able to get my W onto this Callista. So my default response, if you're in the shit, if you're in a shitty situation... Default response is E. Your E is an absolute lifesaver. It, it is, it's actually, I would say, one of the strongest abilities in the game. Um, and um, so what I do here, I thought I was going to get bursted, so I just use my E as a panic button. Basically an oh shit button, like your panic button. We kill this um, 
Callista, beautiful. Get the Triumph proc. Go on the Zac. Another kill. Beautiful. And we end up cleaning up and getting a nice little triple kill here, guys. Now, this is exactly what you want to be looking to do on Pantheon. And you can see here, guys, is that I know... Uh, I'm playing Pantheon. I know Silas was mid to be able to catch the mid wave. Even if I lose a bit of CS mid, it's not a big deal. And this is the thing when playing Pantheon into ranged mages. You shouldn't just be thinking of your lane in a 1v1. You always, it's, Pantheon's actually in a way like the ADTF. Like you can, all, you have so many options macro wise. And the more, you'll see more opportunities when you have more side lane awareness, more jungle awareness, more jungle tracking awareness, all these things, you'll have way more options. Now here, because I was always painting my camera bot, I was understanding the situation of the wave as well, and I knew this would just be a really, really free kill, even if we knew Zach was bot side here. And again, you want to be introducing an element of chaos into these into these games, because if I play this game slow and like a bitch, very carefully, um, you know, it's not going to end up well. Now, this is where it's going to lead before, I'm actually going to show you something. This is where um, the most important bit of the game is right now. Now, what do we see? I'm extremely fed. I'm a 4 and 0 Pantheon. I know we get outscaled. You may ask Curtis, how do you end up actually snowballing the game out of control here? What should you do? So we've already got, I've got, I'm completely far ahead now. I'm, I'm all good. Now, it's not about kills anymore for me. It's about objectives. All my kills right now should be leading to objectives. And what do we know? We know Rift Herald is coming up in eight minutes. This is exactly what we need to be doing. I need to be telling my jungle right now, I want I want Rift Herald on spawn. Because we win every, every top river skirmish with me. Me and Silas destroy Lux and Zac. We need to be getting this. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really roam top here because it felt like it was a bit of a sticky situation. But what happens instead, and because I don't call this for Silas to get uh, Rift Herald, we end up going for, more, uh, fast forward just a little bit here, I'll end up pushing out mid, leaning bot side again to my jungler, um, cleaning up another fight. Which ends up being pretty good, like I get, um, you know, this is exactly what Pantheon wants in a way. But I get a kill, I get another kill. But then, like, we get plates, cool, but we're just not getting enough. We get a dragon, cool, but look what happens because of this. We stay on the map, we get another kill into this Lux, because we're all happy doing getting all these kills, in a second you'll find out that Zack ends up soloing Rift Herald. Now, yes, I can still win the game without Rift Herald, I can still win the game with all these kills, I'm 7-0, beautiful getting dragons, but what I found, in my experience, I actually lose this game. I literally, pause it right now, I lose this game. And I end up, I think I was like 15 and 2 or something. I still lose. And this is what will happen in your lower elo games, is because towers and objectives are so important when playing Pantheon, because the game just gets stalled out. Because Pantheon can't siege. You're versing a Lux, you're versus Xerath, Velkor, Ziggs, one of these champions, you won't be able to do anything without Rift Herald. And we got the dragon way too late. We should be getting dragons way earlier in the game not enough happened, and we end up losing this game, and this is a huge, hugely, hugely painful experience that I don't want you guys to experience in your own games. If you get ahead, first thing you should do is call for dragons, stack dragons as much as you can, and stack Rift Heralds from 8 minutes, because you already, and if you're unsure, oh, the top matchup's 50-50, how do you know you can get Rift? Dude, your Pantheon and you're basically the strongest river skirmishing champion in the game, you need to be getting these objectives, you need to be forcing them, forcing people to blow flashes, forcing it to get scrappy, forcing it to get a bit chaotic, because that's what Pantheon needs. If you play slow, um, you will lose. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into a second VOD and kind of tie all this together, all right, guys? So in this VOD here, guys, I'm actually versing a Zoe, and again, it's a really... This one's uh, played a little bit differently compared to my last one. This one, I know that I have a least jungle, so I know that this uh, Zoe is extremely threatened for, uh, to, from early ganks. So instead of hard pushing level 1 and 2 or pushing level 1 and 2, I just accept reality that um, I want to get pushed in because Elise's gank threat early on is very, very good. I don't want the wave to crash into my tower. I just want it in that nice little pocket outside my um, outside my wave. Outside my tower, sorry. But I missed my Q here. Compared to last one, I wasn't able to... Zoe's just kiting me really, really well. So I wasn't able to land that Q. But again, I'm completely fine playing it a little bit slower, knowing that my Elise can gank it around 2 minutes 30, 2 minutes 40... 
um, and just put the put the wave in a really nice position for this Elise. Remember, guys, you've got to make your jungler's life easier. When playing Pantheon, you want this attention. You know that when you have an Elise, it is so free. So don't just push, push, push just because you can. Um, you play for your jungler. Make it easier for them to do their job. So right now, I'm actually trying to chunk this guy a little bit so he's not full HP when Elise comes. That's why I was trying to start trading because I'm sitting on three corrupting pots like now, right now. I'm trying to thin the wave a little bit as well, knowing it, I know it's going to get quite big in a second. Now, um, and the other thing that I'm actually trying to do is keep Zoe interested. If you play two defensive level one and two, what this is actually going to happen is this guy, this Zoe's just going to be able to freely walk into river and, um, and get a ward. But if I could keep this Zoe interested, you know, trade a bit of HP, use a corrupting pot, use a few abilities, keep her interested, she's going to completely forget about warding or she's not going to be prioritizing warding. And what do I do? I walk up at level three, get my empowered Q, bang, and we blow cleanse. Now look at this, and the way I want to talk about this actually is super interesting. Generally, in these more burst-oriented um, fights in the early game, you don't want to be starting with Empowered W. Ideally, you want to be having three or four stacks. Three stacks is good because then you can do um, W, um, AA, and then Empowered Q. Uh, if you have four stacks, you should do W and then Q, and then Auto Attack. You want to be getting that Empowered Q. Um... Because look what I do there, I had 3 auto attack after my W, um, I ignite, thought we are actually going to chase and kill that guy, but we didn't. So we end up blowing his cleanse, which is really, really big. Now, what do we know about Zoe, and what do we know about Elise, and what do we know about Pantheon? We know that Pantheon is extremely good at diving because your E actually blocks tower, tower shots. Elise can also break aggro from towers, so I knew diving is really, really big. And this is the sort of thing you can be looking to do with Pantheon is um, dive, these early dives, if you take these early, uh, get these really nice um, early ganks off, and I tried to um, flash stun, I was just out of range here, I thought she was going to turn back for that CS, but she didn't, but I know we can completely chase, and it doesn't even matter if Rengar comes, because, you know, we're, we're at least Pantheon, you can do whatever you want, we know this guy doesn't have any summoners, we can just chase him down, bang, and we get another nice little double kill here. And this is the power, and this is the strength of Pantheon Elise. It literally doesn't even matter what jungler they play here. I get my empowered my empowered Q there, I believe. Um, well, yeah, so what I do here, I had four stacks. I W, auto attack, then Q. So in the empowered Q for that burst, look at that. He wasn't even able to get his heal off or anything. And then we're able to get a nice little kill and then chase down this for a double kill. Again, pretty standard stuff, but this is, notice how this is a little different compared to the last game. Uh, we failed, I failed the gank in the last game, but um, this one actually got it done. Now, this VOD's going to be all about what do I do to push my lead. Now, the difference is in this VOD as well, I said level 1, I literally told my jungler, Hey, Lise, at 8 minutes, I want to do Rift with my pressure. That's literally what I said. So we got that kill, I go for a reset, I couldn't afford my dagger, if you can't afford dagger, then just go triple longsword, you can go triple longsword. I could have also opted in for um, starting to build towards my mercury chest, but I just want to snowball, I want that lethality, I want to kill people, um, you know, I want to push the pace of the game. Now, again, what do I do, again, a lot of the time, like I did last video, in this little window before I come back to lane, I really like to get my vision out, just so it gives me that freedom to play aggressively. Because if I get my vision out now, um, I know that this is basically going to be an isolated 1v1, and the jungle's not going to be anywhere near. And here I end up getting clipped by a bubble and taking a pretty bad trade, unfortunately. Um, it is what it is. Ow. So, but I was very happy with Zoe pushing me in right now. And unfortunately, she's picked up a cleanse, which is super annoying with a W. Um, but, you know, it is what it is here. So I had the wave in a pretty good spot. Now, this is, the, the dynamic this, uh, with um, Pantheon and a, a ganking jungle is very interesting. One or two things will happen. You will be so threatening that this guy never touches the wave and you just get shove. You can just get shove and move. So this means you can move into river, you can look for ultimates on sides, you can look for jungle invades, you can start objectives, because they're going to be so scared that they can't walk up. Or, they don't respect, they try to keep you down, they don't respect your kill threat 2v2, they don't lean, they don't ward, and they just die to gank. So even this guy has cleanse, um, at least knows that we have a lot of kill threat, because the wave's in a really, really good spot. Fast forwarding a little bit here, um, Zoe's not respecting. So you'll see in a second, 
here, just fast forwarding as the way is getting slow built out. Now, this way of getting slow built out, I'm completely fine either way. If Zoe gives me, if Zoe doesn't respect, we can kill. If Zoe does respect, I get move, I get six. We can do so many things. We can start dragon. We can look for an invade in the jungle and the red. There's just so many things we can actually do right now. Because if this guy respected, I would have 100% looked to invade this red right now. And we could have just destroyed anyone. But he, um, Zoe did not respect... And we're able to get a nice chain CC. My stun, empowered stun. Beautiful, and to a nice little kill here. Bang. Now, I literally um, tell my jungler after this, I ping the... Ping a, yeah, ping the dragon. I ping, I ping assist me on the dragon, because I know from my past painful experiences, um, we need to push the pace of the game. We need to either stack dragons, we need to get rift heralds, we need, we need to get objectives. And so what I do instead of playing for a tempo reset, which I usually would do very selfishly, um, I end up spending my tempo and spending my resources actually um, helping him get the dragon. And I wouldn't usually do this on a lot of mid champions. I only did this because I need to be working with my team. I need to be working with my jungler. So we both um, can be playing for these objectives, push the pace of the game. There's no point just one of us being strong. Both of us have to be strong. So now I get locked in lane for a little bit, which is quite annoying. So I need to minimize. Something to note, guys. Again, my jungler is now looking to full clear. She hasn't cleared any uh, camps at all. She's just ganked mid. We've just got the dragon. Now I need to chill. So what I actually do for a second now, because I understand the situation of my of my um, my Elise, I try not to do anything too crazy at the moment. I, need, I try to just chill a little bit. Knowing that I don't really want to give Rengar a ganking opportunity, although I don't think Rengar can really gank me anyway. Not too bad. Now, in between ways, whenever you have a bit of a lull, a lull moment, what you want to be basically doing is just leaning out of vision to threaten ultimates. I was just constantly panning my camera just to see the state of bot lane, but the wave wasn't big enough. It's a good habit to get into is constantly pan your camera just to assess the situation, just in case a fight breaks out or they've got a big wave and you can dive. Um, it's just a really good habit to get into. Right now, I was actually really scared of Rengar because I knew that my jungler had actually based. Um... So I was actually quite scared at the moment. This is why I was I was heavy leaning to bot side because I knew Rengar was somewhere top side. But even then I was quite scared because Rengar did have R. So luckily I was able to get that wave in. Lean onto my top side here with my jungler because he's nearby. And then we see this Rengar. We blow his ultimate which is really, really big. His ulti and his flash. So I know right now this Rift Herald's up. I really want this Rift Herald. That's all I want. So I actually ping the Rift Herald. I'm not trying to tell him he should repel over or something. I don't know if he could repel over or the Blast Cone was there. I really wanted him to start this um, this Rift Herald. So I'm keeping pressure mid, knowing that Elise wants to do things. I see bot lane trying to hover bot. Then I see Elise go topside. So again, any single river skirmish like this, I need to be there. I actually think this is a mistake for me, even leaning bot side here. I should be fully committing to leaning towards my jungler. I, I, if bot wins or dies or anything, I should just leave it. I should just play to top side 100% here. I think this is really bad by me. This is something I would review after and be like, what am I doing? Because you can actually, one thing on Pantheon, and, and if you're reviewing Pantheon, every single wave you should be reviewing, why did I lean this side? Was this an efficient lean? Did I get anything off this lean? Should I have ultimate here? Why didn't I ultimate here? You should always be looking... How did you use every single wave of pressure? Because again, you have all this pressure in the early game, you need to do something. It's really good habit to get into is actually um, review every single one of them. Here, I got greedy. I should have just flash queued him, but I thought he would survive. And Anyway, we end up trading kills. So I get this Rengar, and then they're chasing me, and I end up dying here. I think I could have flashed and got out. I don't know why I didn't flash here. I th I, maybe I just felt like I would get chased down by by Zoe because she had the 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 um the rift scuttle and she had ignite and they're all there. Maybe I thought I was just dead anyway. I thought I'd just get chased down, so I just thought I'd be better for me to conserve my flash. It is what it is. I think that's all my bad anyway. That all for me stems off me leaning not leaning topside. My Elise is topside here. I should not be leaning bot side at all. I should just be off this wave leaning topside because if. Rengar shows, we win the 2v2. If not, we can literally start Rift Herald. We can do whatever. We could invade the jungle. This was just really bad by me. So I, I'm sorry, Elise, if you're watching this video. This, this is uh, completely my bad. Anyway, coming back on the map, what do I need to do? I need to make sure we are going for this Rift Herald. And right now, I thought 
Zoe was actually committing to this tower, so I ended up using my ultimate, but for some reason she just did one auto attack. So I was so confused here. I'm like, why would she walk up for one auto attack? Like, who does that? It's either they just fully reset, or they stay for multiple autos. Who stays for one auto attack? So I was so confused there. So that was another misplay by me. But again, because I told my uh, least to do Rift Herald, any of these Rift Herald fights are good. And look at this. If a fight breaks out, I'm going to get here first. Zoe can't follow into these fights. Um, this is exactly what I want. Then um, Yumi ends up coming here. So uh, we end up burning nothing is what it is. At least gets the Rift Herald. Now, ideally, the way you want to use Rift Herald is ideally you want to get a few plates first by yourself and then um, Rift Herald. So, you, like, ideally, you want to be using it for the last two plates. The other play of the other way of using Rift Herald is you and the jungler make a side lane play, and if you get a kill, then you use it because then you can have four people hitting the tower. So it's a really good way to use Rift. I actually don't agree with the way we used Rift here. We did know that um, Zoe was basing um, and resetting. But I just don't think this was worth, like, we got a few plates, I believe we get, you know, we, we get the tower to one plate, but just not a fan of the way we use this rift here, because we can't do anything off it. Like, a big, a big principle I got from, from pro players, a rift is only good for one or two reasons. You use a rift to create pressure to do something else. So, for example, maybe we're going to dive bot or dive aside or get a dragon or steal a buff or whatever. Make them react to the Rift Herald so they, they have to spend time dealing with it to do something else. Or, it just literally use it on two, um, on two plates and it ends up breaking the tower fully because the last two plates are the hardest to kill. So, I don't really agree with the way we use this, unfortunately. Um, but we nearly get the tower. But, you know, worst case scenario, we have the next rift. We're going to get a lot more pressure. That tower is really close to dying. Um, it's not too bad. End up hovering, hovering bot side. Dragon's coming up again soon. Um, so, again, the pace of the game is getting pushed. It's not just leading to scaling. Um, it's not just in a lull state. We are doing things. Everyone's blowing flashes. It's turning chaotic. We're getting objectives. It's looking pretty good. This is, this is the type of game that you want. Now, I knew my jungle was around me. Now, this is another thing, guys. When you know your team is around you, so I, I know the my jungler is on the enemy raptors. I know my support's hovering me at the moment. I know that if I force a fight here, my team will back me up. When playing Pantheon, because your E is such good durability and such good survivability, you can actually drag out skirmishes. So one thing you can actually do is when your jungler's in the area, just force stuff. Get things happening because you can survive long enough that people can get back you up. So here I go for this play, even though I know the enemy's in the area, I soak a bit of damage here or they, I stop them from, um, you know, bursting me or whatever if, if they were closer. And then my team's able to capitalize and we end up bursting this Teemo. Again, I'm only doing this because my jungler's in the area. I wouldn't do these sorts of plays if my jungler's farming bot side or ganking bot. I would not do these plays. You always have to be aware about your jungler's location. If my jungler chose not to play towards mid this game, then it's fine. I would play for wave and then play for hover and play for ultimates onto side. Very much like I did in that last game because constantly ultimate the side. But that's just not the case. And again, every all these 2v2 skirmishes, I'm very happy. Now, I actually go for a really aggressive play here. So look at this. I know this um, this Zoe didn't have flash, so I flash W, auto attack. I use my... So this is actually next level. This is what you need to be doing on Pantheon. So I know I only have one stack of my passive. So I, I just flash W, auto attack. Then what I do is I auto attack one more, so I've got four stacks here. Now, Zoe's actually kiting me because I'm exhausted and with her movement speed of her W, so I can't get in range. So what I actually do here, I know I have Ignite, I know I have my E and Q, but if I know if I use um, Ignite and my normal Q, it won't kill Zoe. I need the Empowered Q. So what I actually do, I use my E to get my last passive stack, Ignite, then Q. Look at that. E... Ignite, Q, bang, one shot. So again, this is why you need to be always constantly conscious of your passive stacks because it really, it, it actually dictates the order of your abilities. Now, if I had full passive stacks from the beginning of this, then I probably, I mean, you know, if I had full stacks, I would probably flash W for, to get more Conqueror stacks. Then, then I would E, auto, then Q because then I would get my second, um, my second uh, passive 
fully stacked passive. So it really depends on how many stacks you have, okay? So it, it, and so play around with that, and it take a while to get comfortable, but it is quite straightforward. Now, fast forwarding here, um, got my Mercury treads working towards my um, what's it? Oh, I keep forgetting. The, I always forget the name of this item. You know the the lethality item is it? Not Umbral Glaive, the one that gives you the spell shield. It's like the AD Lethality Banshee's Veil. Whatever the hell that one's called. Oh, is it Knight, Knight's Veil? Something like that. Now, out of base here, um, another good tip here, guys. When you go Yomu's, another... I mean, I, don't, I think I... Yeah, do it here. Is when coming out of base like this, you can actually use Yomu's and actually look for lane ganks. So what I actually do here, I pan my camera. I know Zoe doesn't really have too much tempo on me. So what I use, I use my Yomu's. I pan my camera bot. I thought they were going to overextend. So I just start leaning. I start leaning out of base to look for these lane ganks. This is something you can do on Pantheon because Pantheon ult is so good. And again, a huge thing, guys, with Pantheon. Let's just say I ultimate bot and we um, get a double kill and we get bot tower, but I lose mid tower. Yes, that is bad, but if that increases the pace of the game and gets things chaotic when it was in a lull state, it would be worth it because Pantheon doesn't really want to be, doesn't really care about losing mid tower anyway because I'm not an immobile mage. I I don't care if I if you like you're not going to chase me down anyway. I'm Pantheon, so like I would rather introduce chaos into the game than just sitting in a lull state. And I'd be willing to make trades, but out of base, I ping. The dragon, because I really want dragons. I want to be stacking dragons. Because, again, getting dragons is just utilizing my early pressure because we win every skirmish. Either way, they come, they fight, we win because we're playing Elise Pantheon. Or, they don't fight, we stack dragons. And when scaling does come into play, these dragons are going to override everything anyway when we have, like, a soul, uh, you know, infernal soul or whatever we have. Now, I uh, go back mid because we've secured this dragon. Here. Try to dodge the E, but I don't get it, unfortunately. Um, this was a perfect example, again, of doing that... Um, see how I use my E to stack up my passive, and then I get another auto attack, then I Q. I don't just, like, use my Q when it's on uh, not empowered. Now, now what happens at this point, I believe that we try and hover to break mid, which is really, really big. If you can break mid versus any immobile mage, it's extremely beneficial for Pantheon. Um, because then again, the, the quality of the game is just going to get, it's just going to get chaotic. It's going to get crazy. Um, they don't really have, because uh, the main reason actually, if you break this tower, if this guy shows mid here to collect the wave, you have so much room here to ultimate this way. Um, oh my god, look, what? <laughs> Just let me erase that, it's inappropriate. Let's get off there, get that out of there. Yeah, if, if I ulti here, and um, Zoe's here, then um, there's so much room. Then Zoe basically can never catch waves up here. He always has to catch waves um, down at the tier 2, so... Getting mid tower is really, really good, and if it's just me versus Zoe, I get to push Zoe all the way to tier 2 here, then which gives me so much more room, so much more jungle control, so much more space to ultimate. You can kind of see how Pantheon is very much like in the aggressive AD version of TF. It's bursty, it's a lot of macro elements, there's a lot of pressure, wave clear, like, it's just a, a lot more aggressive, non-scaling version of TF. It's just, which is, um, I love, you know, a lot of you guys will love as well. But again, it does require a lot of this urgency, and it's intense. Playing, <laughs> playing Pantheon is an intense thing. It really is. And again, look at this. So instead of resetting here, I noticed that the Kaiser was really overextended because Morgana came mid, and I knew Morgana was split from our AD carry. So again, side lane awareness, game sense here. I know that Kaiser is absolutely split, so I'm able to capitalize on the support being split from the um, from the AD carry. Beautiful. Empower W, and again, just um, look at this. So, Empower W, Auto Attack, Q, E on the back end there to um, block the tower shots. Nice. Pushing the pace of the game, Insta Reset, working towards my second item, my, um, what is it called? Whatever it's called, that item, spell shield thing. Now, I lose mid tower. That is fine. If I lose mid tower, it's whatever, okay? We're trading objectives. I would rather trade objectives on Pantheon... Uh, any day for kills and a tower. We get bot tower as well. Anyway, so such, we get a tower and a kill, they get a tower. It is what it is. Now, fast forwarding a little bit here, 
Um, I say, I, I, now, I say this in chat. I say, I want spawn on, uh, Rift on spawn. So I'm always pinging the timer of Rift Hell. Literally in my chat, I'm pinging the timer of Rift Hell because I want my team to know I want this objective. I want people to be on it when it's up. I want my jungler to be there. I want to have the correct lane assignment. So I'm literally telling Rise Go Bot, uh, I'm telling people, me top, and I want my AD carry and support mid, but because they get caught, I have to catch one more mid wave. Now I'm able to use my, and the great thing about Yomu's guys, is that Yomu's allows you to gap close to get that stun like this. So I'm able to get that stun um, like that. Beautiful. Auto attack. Auto attack, empowered Q, bang, free kill. But again, I'm always trying to control the lane assignments. I'm always calling the next objective. If you don't do this, if you don't um, have this sense of urgency and, and put that control, this this sort of macro element of the game, you will slowly lose. I mean, you can still win games, guys. I'm not saying that you can't, but this is just a way to really climb. Like, like this is going to help you win any of those 50-50 games, you will win. Um, honestly, like, this is how you can hardcore carry as a mid laner. So, as we know, we're getting Rift Herald on spawn here. Beautiful. This is going to be really, really big. Now, in terms of using Rift, the second Rift, I actually like to have it on me, because then when I go into the side lane, I, there's a few things you can actually do. I can, because Pantheon, again, versus a lot of these mid mages, the side lane's really, really beneficial for Pantheon, but the great thing about it is that if I want to ult to a play, I can actually use my Rift just before I ult to a play and just let it kill towers while I go to a play. Or we kill someone while at least plays to me and then they can't trade sides of the map because we have Rift Herald. So they can't just trade off um, the, the laner who versus me because then we just break a, a crap ton of towers. So shoving out the sideways. Beautiful. Really, really nice. Fast forwarding, dragon's coming up in 50 seconds, so I'm pinging, we end up pinging the dragon. And now this is the benefit of um, getting mid towers, that you're able to loop behind, you're able to get a lot of control with your team like this. Do these crazy creative roams with Yomus, just running around the map like a psycho. Um, blowing people's summoners and things like that. I think we just blow Zoe's flash here. Yeah, blow her flash. Anyway, fast forwarding a little bit here. Oh, this is actually really handy, a tip to know guys. When you want to, again, start a fight as Pantheon, a lot of the time you'll find that your team is scared to face check bushes. Now, you can take that responsibility. Look at this. I knew they were in the area, but look at this. I knew they were all in here. I get I get binded, and look at that. Bang. E. Nothing happens to me. And I'm able to back out. We end up just killing the guy who after they make a pick on me. So, um, Pantheon is a really good way of... Face checking the jungle, getting vision, using your E as a basically a get out of jail free card. So again, I'm playing on bot side here because the dragon's the ne next objective. Always being on the objectives as it spawns, pushing the pace of the game. I know I'm saying this a lot, but trust me, I've had so many painful experiences, even in Platinum and Diamond. I was like, what is going wrong? I'm getting so many early kills, but I kept losing. And I realized, I had this uh, realization, I'm like, I'm in Platinum because when I'm in Platinum, people don't know macro. They won't use my lead to do anything. Whereas in Master Tier Plus, they will naturally use your lead to do things. They will nat the junglers will naturally get dragons and objectives if they can. Because junglers are always looking to do it. Laners will abuse your pressure. They will play more aggressive. They will get deep vision. But in this elo, they don't do things. Okay? So, like, you gotta... It's like... The way I view it is, like, you gotta manually start the car, in a way. It's like when, when you start a car, there's, like... When you stall a car, you gotta like push it or something. I don't know what the hell goes on with the car. I don't know, I'm not a mechanic or anything, but basically it's like you gotta push start a car when your battery's dead or something. So it's like the exact same thing. I'm I'm basically pushing the car instead of like being able to sit in it and start it the normal way. Anyway, we get another pick here. Beautiful. Then I want to go in the side lane. Once I'm in the side lane here, I want someone to react to me. And if someone reacts to me in the side lane, it's exactly like TF. If someone reacts here, I'll look to create a man advantage fight with my ultimate and trying to force a 4v5. Either or, or the jungler hovers me, um, which you can actually do if you're doing, get the jungler to hover you and actually just look for dives in the side lane. That's just another equally good option. Now, um, I'm telling the team 131 because Ryze was really, really strong here. And I actually thought we could sneak Baron. So I make a, an interesting macro game call. As we fast forward a little bit here. I believe I, t I get a pick on this on this Teemo. Nothing too special here. But what actually happens, I see Rise bot. He's very, very strong. So I use the Rift Herald top. 
And then what I actually do is I, I ping this Baron because I know they had no vision. They had no river control. They had no river control. So I thought, what, what happens if we just do this? They're going to have to react to this Rise bot. Kaiser just shows bot. Maybe we can actually just sneak this. But it took too long. Um, and then Rengar just ulties. And then we end up... Um, kind of getting, like, we just get destroyed here on this Baron, unfortunately. So, I make this call. I learnt my lesson. Maybe I was forcing a little bit too hard this this, this specific call, but it's not the end of the world. Um, we trade some kills, but uh, I take, I said, I take responsibility for that call. It is what it is. I actually kind of step you through what I saw. So, like, I knew they had no River Control. I had the Rift Herald top, so they had to react to the Rift Herald. Ryze was bot, um, and I knew someone had to react to bot because Teemo was dead. So I thought that would send someone to, to deal with this this rise. So then Kaisa shows bot. I'm like, all right, cool. There's no way they should expect that we're on this. Um, they're still reacting to that Rift Herald on top lane. I believe it's actually still, yeah, they're still reacting to this Rift Herald. We have plenty of time here. Um, but we just did it so goddamn slow and we're so squishy because we have no tanks. Um, and then Rengar ends up finding us and, um, yeah, unfortunate. Anyway, coming out here, what I end up doing again is actually trying to um, play for this next dragon. So what I end up saying is play for next dragon, souls in a minute. Let's just play for the soul, then we can play for dragon. And this is the benefit, guys. Look at this. And, oh my god, this is so good. I, I love this. So we made this huge bad Baron call. Okay? Bad Baron call, I accept reality, not good. But look at this. Because we've stacked three dragons, the fourth dragon, it's only 22 minutes of the game, but we've got soul in a minute. Now, if we hadn't stacked any of these dragons, we hadn't done any of it. We just got for kills, or maybe got a few towers. We would be shit scared. Like, maybe not this game, because Ryze is so fed, but I would be shit scared a lot of games. Oh my god, we're not going to be able to get Baron. Because Pantheon, a lot of time, Pantheon really struggles to do Baron a lot of the time, and you'll find a lot of comms struggle to do Baron, and then you're like, what do I do? If we can't do Baron, and, and we don't have dragon stacked, we're just going to get outscaled. We can't dive them, what do we do? And then you just lose the game. This is why stacking dragons early on in the game, utilizing your pressure, um, is just like, it just secures the win. So we get a pick here onto this um, Teemo coming out of base with my Yomu's pretty standard stuff. Get some vision control, beautiful. Um, again, this is the beautiful thing about getting to the objective early. You can set up um, really nice stun bushes where you, they, if they face check, they just die. Steal the red buff, come back, secure the... Ocean Soul, pretty self-explanatory stuff. Then we just go to the Baron, knowing that we actually, actually we just made a pick onto the Rengar. He steals the dragon, unfortunately. But then if he wants to sacrifice his life a dragon, cool. And this is the other thing of having three dragons stacked. You force the enemy to take a fight against you because they don't want to give soul. Because no one wants to give mountain soul. So, either way, they give it, we're super strong, we win. They don't give it, and they fight us, we win the fight, or they die, and we get Baron anyway. So either way, it's a win-win. We, and then after this, we get the Baron, uh, we take a fight, beautiful, and then we end up winning. Now, I just want to quickly round off this video by talking a little bit about team fighting as Pantheon. Now, just because you're a dive champion doesn't necessarily mean, this doesn't necessarily mean you always want to dive onto the back line. There's a few differing things you can do with Pantheon and team fights, and it really just depends on your team composition. I only find diving on the back line is good if you're diving with someone else when you know you can basically kill them, because Pantheon can't really 100 to 0 people. He can chunk a lot of people, but it's hard to 100 to 0. So if you're diving with someone else, it's really, really good. Otherwise, what I actually find is I just be a nuisance. I peel the back line, and then I jump onto someone who's trying to kill... Sorry, I peel my, my back line, and then I jump on the nearest target, and then I just act as like a, a damage soaker. I, I Like this, I kill this Teemo, and then I go onto the next target, like this, I go into Kais or whatever, kill next target on this Morgana, go on this guy, and look what I do, I just stand in front of him, just E like that. And then it's so hard for anyone to get through to my backline, because I out-tank anyone. And I, if they disrespect me, then I can, in an extended fight with Conqueror stacks, I can just kill a lot of people. So, with Pantheon, experiment with being a bit of a peel bot. If you are really fired, it's either way, you can dive and 100 to 0 someone, or you're playing as a peel bot, utilizing your E as a form of, really good form of self-peel with your stun. And finishes off just quickly talking about the build, guys. I usually go Yomu's into um, either... It's Edge of Night. That's what it's called. Edge of Night um, into Black Cleaver. Well, I can't write. Black Cleaver. And then I usually get, like, GA. If I'm really far ahead, sometimes I don't get Edge of Night. Sometimes I just go Yomu's 
Uh, so, so the way it works is if they're super squishy, I like going double lethality. If they're not, then they're quite tanky. Then go Yomu's into Black Cleaver. And if they are... Um, and then after that, if you're really far ahead, you can actually go Death Dance. Um, Death Dance. Death, Death Dance is a really good item if you're ahead. But majority of the time, I just go Yomu's, like the double lethality into Edge of Night. And then I go into Black Cleaver. And then I usually just go into GA um, or more if I need it. Um, sometimes you can go Sterax. Sterax is not bad either, but generally this is like the standard, the standard path. Now, I know this video was a little bit different to my usual video. I didn't want to go super in depth on Pantheon because I do really feel like he is a champion that just requires you playing him. Experiment around with it. Push your limits. Don't go, don't overthink things. He's a champion that is very fun, very simple. And again, his identity is just this, this very simple 100 to 0 burst oriented, um, you know, AD Assassin. You don't need to overcomplicate anything. But again, he has a get out of jail free card with his E. So have a bit of fun with Pantheon. Potentially experiment with him, adding him into your pool. Um, make sure you are pushing the pace of the game. Otherwise, you will lose games. And let me know how it go goes, guys. Cheers.